Salut, David Allman here. Today, Friday, is Wild Card Friday. You know about the schedule, right? If not, there's a video from a few days ago where I'm telling you about it. Anyways, today we're going to work on Deep Inside the Mind. So, Deep Inside the Mind is my first album, and it was released about 10 years ago or so, and um, it was actually finished, not released, but it was released in 2006, but it was finished before that. So this album is probably, oh, at least 15 years, at least. Um, I was 19 when I finished writing all the songs, I recorded that later, but the songs are, are old. I still love them. And this album kind of reminds me of the, the Star Wars effect, like George Lucas released episode four, five, six before episode one, two, three, because of um, the ideas that he had in his head for all the, the effects and all that. And, and he didn't have, from what I understand, he didn't have the, um, the resources and the technology too to create all those special effects that he wanted to have in episode one, two, three. So he, really, he started with episode four. I should have done that, but no. Uh, young David Wallerman decided to release episode one, even if he didn't have the, the skills and the production and the technique for what this should have been. Today, I do have those things. I have better gear. I have better understanding of how to record guitars. I, I'm at a place here where I don't have to struggle that much in order to find musicians and, and play with musicians and record and rehearse and all that. And if you hear the early demos of this, this is what it sounds like. It's different. <laughs> that was done at the time on PC, which nothing against PC at all. Um, but w it was really the early beginnings of home studio recording uh, in the digital world. Today, you know, with um, Logic Pro 10, which is what I use, again, you can use a lot of other DAWs, that's fine, but I've got that, I've got my Axe Effects, um, I've got. Um, Speaking of Star Wars, that's a text I got back from a friend, and uh, we will go see it sometime soon. I haven't seen it yet, the new one. Anyways, today we are continuing working on the re-release of Deep Inside the Mind. When I say re-release, it's really a, a new production. Same songs, I'm keeping the drums and the bass, which I worked on in the last few months, and then I added some basic keys on there. Not the final ones, just basic ones to track to. Some of these I probably will keep. Those are mostly pads and things like that. And uh, I had on my schedule to start recording rhythm guitars. So that's what we're gonna do. This is the first song, um, Creation. And I don't know what's gonna happen, but today we're just starting the process and I'm gonna walk you through what I would do um, in this particular case. Not that it's, that it's the way to do it, but it's the way I'll do it. So let's uh, let's get started. Here we are. We're starting rhythm guitar. So we've got our first project open. This is a, I think there are 14 songs on there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven. There's 14 songs on there. This is song number one. And uh, I went through all the songs and aligned the bass and drums, made sure that it was coherent. I imported all the old drum files, which were recorded on uh, NADAT at the time, and that was kind of a nightmare, but everything is now digitally in the computer, not mixed, just rough, rough, rough mix. It doesn't sound great, but enough to track. And the first thing that I do, as you know, is to color code everything. It's gonna make things easier to see visually. So I've got my drums, usually I keep drums on the top and then right after I've got my bass, so that if I need to align things, I can go in to my drum sections here and I see the hits and I can match the hits with the bass, which I already did. So that's um, that should be pretty much in sync. And then uh, underneath here, I've got the, the track. So the track is the the original track that the, the drum and bass tracked to. And I did that oh, 20 years ago or so. And um, that might give me some ideas as to what the original intent was. If, I, if we listen back here. <laughs> I've got the click, that's what the drummer tracked to. Some basic ideas. 
just to, to, to give me an idea of what I originally wanted. I'm gonna mute that, I don't really need it, but I'll keep it as a reference. I'm gonna color code all the rest, so my um, heavy metal organ here, I'll code it a certain color. The ooze, what are the ooze? These are ooze. So same thing, I'm, I'm not gonna go too in depth in the color coding because there's really no, there's no rules here. I'm just doing that for myself, but I'm gonna code the ooze and the choir together because I know those are kind of vocal effect type. This is what the choir sounds like here, right here. I love that sound. It's an omnisphere instrument. Uh, polka and polka are gonna be together. These are accordions and I'll color code those, uh, whatever, yellow. <laughs> Grand piano and pad, and, and I'm just kind of coding like that uh, for myself. I'll use a different color for the orchestral. Um, there we go. Just very basic stuff. I'll, I'll rearrange things later as we go. But now I can see that kind of at a glance, the number of different types of instruments that I have, and it's kind of organized like that, and it'll be easier for me. Um, this is the final track for the, the original release of the album, so that I can refer to that if I need to. I did not align it with the rest. I'm gonna do that right now, but, but this will give me an idea of what the final um, output of the original release was. Hopefully the final re-release will sound much better than that, but that just kind of gives me an idea. So I'm going to pause this. I'm gonna align my, this, this track right there to the rest of the song, and then we're gonna start guitars. Okay, that was pretty simple. I just made the tracks bigger, looked at the curve, and made sure that the, those peaks would match what I had on the individual bass, for example, and, and now everything matches the way it should match. So that's gonna be very useful if I want to refer to things like that. I'm gonna mute that album track, which is the, the final, you know, the, the release for the original release here. I'm gonna mute that and uh, the track, which is what the, the drummer tracked to, I'm also gonna mute that because I don't need it and I'm gonna create a new track for our guitar. So I'm gonna create a track, I'm using the Axe Effects 2. I'm gonna record that in stereo, I could always convert that to mono if I want to, just a habit, I, I do that in stereo. Uh, maybe I shouldn't, I don't know, but that's what I do. And then um, I kind of played around with some presets of the Axe Effects. The preset I'm using here is um, a factory preset, thick and chunky, that I'm gonna modify a little bit. I saved it to a new Preset number, I'm gonna remove the reverb. I'll add that later. And the enhance, I feel that the enhance is uh, it not, not doing what I want, so I'm gonna remove that also. And now I've got my preset. Something pretty basic. And I'm gonna track to that. And for this, I'm gonna avoid the mistake that I did with the original um, the original version and that I redid, it's not really a mistake, but it's a, a, a way of working that is not gonna work here, I think. For the latest album, Evolving Seas of Glory, which is a much bigger production, what I did is double all the rhythm track, rhythm guitar tracks, but I did it piece by piece. So I recorded one riff and then changed my sound and recorded another riff uh, and panned that right and left and that created that thick thing that you have. Here I'm gonna go for a more raw tone, organic tone. I'm just gonna track one track through all the different songs, um, maybe using the same preset, we'll see. And I'm just gonna do that without too much worry of, of um, uh, surgical precision. I'm gonna try to be as precise as I can, but then I'll review that and I might double things after the fact. But I might keep this as a simple tr track, I don't know yet. But Let's just start tracking and, and see what happens.
Okay, it sounds very raw, definitely, but that's kind of the approach here because I'm gonna to try to blend things together and make things well after. I'm gonna focus on the uh, straight song, straightforward song, not too much uh, ear candy, you know, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna go crazy over that. This just a basic, basic raw track. I'm gonna do that with all the songs. And once I had that, I'm gonna go back and gel things together, try to mix things together, fix a few things that, uh, that in the end are gonna be very important. For example, the drums here, they have this hiss here. So I'm gonna uh, probably take care of that and, and blend things together with some, compress some compression maybe and some EQ. Uh, probably update you on that in a later video on a Friday probably. But like the hiss on the drums, for example, is bothering me here. You hear that overall and that creates ear fatigue. So I'll do that. I'll keep you uh, posted on the process. Um, we'll see what happens. I just got an email this morning from uh, Michael Kart, who's done the artwork for the second album, Evolving Seas of Glory. He's also going to work on this. He's going to replace the original album, which um, this was um, this was done like this. With at the time, it was not a, a, a cell phone. It was a regular, a regular phone. There were no cell phones at the time, and I was just holding my hand like that and, and took a picture. I thought it was cool, but today <laughs> I can do better. So I hired Michael for that, and uh, I'll keep it posted. Can't wait to hear the end of this. Right now, it's like you know uh, the. It's hard. It's hard to hear what is happening here, but in the end, I know it'll all turn out good, and. Uh, I'll continue working on it. Thanks so much for watching this and being part of this. I'll see you next time. Till then, city.